My next guest is Best of the Web columnist James Toronto uh, to talk about the untimely passing of journalist Andrew Breitbart, who uh, died uh, in California late last night. Um, welcome, James. Thanks, good to be here. So, uh, James, you interviewed Breitbart for the Wall Street Journal a couple years back. Uh, what can you tell us about him? What was your impression? Well, I, the main, I, I would say, first of all, you described him in the intro as a journalist. Uh, he was a journalist of sorts. He did engage in a form of journalism, but I think it's a mistake to think of him primarily as a journalist. What he really was, was a uh, conservative activist and an, a media entrepreneur, but an activist in the uh, mold of Saul Alinsky, the, uh, the writer of Rules for Radicals. Uh, Alinsky was a left winger. Uh, Breitbart was a right winger, but Breitbart used a lot of Alinsky's tactics, which were designed to challenge institutions of authority. And Breitbart did that magnificently with institutions that are dominated by the left. Okay, and you're talking about, um, I mean, he worked with folks like James O'Keefe, another sort of uh, uh, similar, who takes a similar type approach uh, to uh, exposés and, and exposing organizations like ACORN and so forth. Is that what you're, what you're referring to? That's right. He had exposés of left-wing organizations like ACORN, the NAACP, Common Cause. NPR. Uh, also, of course, yeah. uh, right, NPR, a yeah. uh, media organization. Uh, another one was uh, Anthony Weiner, whom he exposed in, uh, in a different sense. But if you look at Weiner, it's, it's another case of uh, he was quite hypocritical. He was a sanctimonious male feminist, and it turned out that wasn't the way he actually lived his life. Yeah, uh, the uh, hypocrisy seemed to be something that um, that Breitbart took particular interest in, particularly when it came to uh, not only the left but the mainstream media in general. And and in your in your interview with him, you said that he practiced a form of journalism that was somewhat different from traditional journalism. What 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 were the differences? Well, he uh, obviously had a point of view, which we on the journal editorial page also have right. a point of view. But the big difference is he was not bound by the ethics of institutional journalism because he didn't claim the authority that we claim as institutional journalists. So therefore, he was able to get away with a lot more. Now, he was criticized for this, but the criticisms didn't really stick because uh, he was following one of Alinsky's rules, which is hold the enemy to its own standards of behavior. The enemy there, the, the enemy, quote unquote, the, the, the mainstream press was trying to turn its standards of behavior back on him. But because he's not part of a, a, of a journalistic institution, because he's not claiming any authority, uh, he's, that, that criticism doesn't really work against him. Uh, it works against a mainstream media outlet that, uh, that violates its ethics uh, because that, the, the, the promise of keeping to those ethical standards is where, there, is where such an organization's authority comes from. Uh, James, do you think there's a there's still a market out there for the type of, of, of activist journalism that Breitbart practiced, or, or is he one of a kind? Do you think this sort of thing is gonna is gonna continue um, by other means? Well, there's no question there's a market for it. His uh, websites, uh, as far as I can tell, were doing very well. He got a lot of attention for the work he did. He brought down some powerful people. Uh, whether anybody else can quite do it, I don't know. You know, I read Rules for Radicals about a year ago, uh, and I really think uh, Breitbart is very, a figure very much comparable to Alinsky. One thing I was struck by at the end of the, uh, of, of the book was uh, Alinsky died a few years after he wrote the book. Uh, he really was sort of sui generis. Uh, you can't really think of another community organizer who was effect as effective as Alinsky was. He had a, a very unusual set of talents. Barack Obama, of course, is often called an Alinskyite. Right. He got a sense of a community organizer. He was a complete failure. It's not <laughs> something that just anyone can do. So I don't know whether there will be another Breitbart out there. I, it, it may well be that there won't. Do, do you think Breitbart's rise was uh, sort of a result of shortcomings in traditional media? That if, if, if the mainstream media had been doing its job and doing it properly, there'd be no need for, for an Andrew Breitbart? Well, the mainstream media and other uh, liberal institutions of authority. Look, what Breitbart was doing was basically exposing corruption in institutions of authority. Power always corrupts. Uh, it's, uh, it's human nature. And uh, he was using means that were not necessarily pure. But you don't have to be pure to expose corruption. 
Uh, so the, the, the closing quote in my interview with him back in 2009 was, uh, I w I'm not trying to slay the dragon, he said, I'm just trying to embarrass it into being a more reasonable dragon. Of course, the media uh, pride themselves on ha taking an adversarial stance toward those in power. The problem is the media have a lot of power. Uh, the media, uh, by and large, reflect one political ideology, so they don't necessarily take an adversarial stance to people in power who uh, who uh, share that ideology. Right. And that's where there's an opening for somebody like Breitbart to come along and embarrass the media uh, and undermine their...